Some podcasts today only review one album, or less. That makes us angry. But instead of cursing the darkness, rap critic and I have decided to do something about it. This week's episode features two album reviews. And that's why our podcast is better. But before we get into those, RC... It's it's going on podcast with rap critic and me. (laughs) We should say that, right? I think they know. You already know what it is. <laughs> they already know what it is. Unless they got dropped in like fucking Mr. Bean <laughs> on the fucking sidewalk. Where am I? What podcast is this? That is right. Uh, well, oh yeah, I didn't even say going off in that intro. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, it's going off with our uh, rap critic and muse. Uh, RC and I were looking at the Billboard top 100 or top have any 40 anyway. It. Honestly, just the top 10. And yeah. uh, we got to talking about Bad Habit by Steve Lacey. And uh, <laughs> I admitted that I really don't listen to the radio much at all anymore. So I haven't heard this song yet. RC was like, hey, what about Bad Habit? I thought he was still talking about Ed Sheeran. That's how <laughs> no, far That's back. yesterday's news. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking plural. So I haven't heard this. I'm going to give this a listen because R- R- RC said it's a guilty pleasure of his. So I need to know what the hubbub's about. So I'm going to listen to it right now. He's got the uh, Jello Biafra shirt. They did this song that was like a parody of what like sellout punks, like what their songs sound like when they sign to a major label. Oh, is that so? And, and he had a shirt with an S on it. And he was like, oh, well, I need to look professional because we're, we're signed to a major label. We're, 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 we're the big boys now. So he put a tie on and it looked like a dollar sign. And yeah. that's what Steve Lacey is doing in the video. He's got the S on his shirt with the dollar sign, making it, the tie making it look like a dollar sign. So what you're he saying... He knows what he's doing. So, so big saying Jello that, Biafra guy, Steve Lacey. What you're saying is he should have had two ties to sort of like, you know, no. really look like a dollar sign, you know. Oh shit, yeah, it does have two, doesn't it? <laughs> Fuck. He basically summed up my thoughts on it when he said, it's okay. Oh, <laughs> Like, it's fine. Yeah. Like, I don't love it. It has, it has a young, punky energy to it that I like. Punky, poppy <laughs> energy, you know? I do like his, uh, his little bratty, punky attitude. Right? It? And then the sort of like, oh, but I'm also going to try to do a little falsetto. Da, 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 da. You know, there's a, there's a little vulnerability in there. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like his sound for sure. I think just musically, it just kind of feels like. It's a little loose. It's like 2020s elevator music. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think it's earwormy for me because I've been like, I had that moment where I was listening to it and I was just like, you know, just. Uh, the song is just happening and then it gets to that catchy part the I wish I do and then when it connects the emotion to the earworminess and I was just like oh fuck you song I wish I did you and me I wish I it's like god damn it like yeah he had a money hook there I was like fuck <laughs> like, now if you've been following the show and you're a numbers guy you'll notice that it is episode 310 and that can only mean one thing RC it's personal recommended slash suggestions or reviewer's choice time once again. That's right. So RC and myself have selected two albums from our personal collections to uh, bring to the show, bring to the table for, for the other to take a bite of, to do a little taste test and uh, yeah, let y'all know what we think. So which one do you want to uh, start with here? I want to start with uh, Flood by They Might Be Giants. So uh, They Might Be Giants' 1990 uh, release, their third album. As RC- they made clear at the first track, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, ladies and gentlemen, this started almost like it was like a rap album, you know, when they're trying to do like the fake pompousness, you know, like like a slippery <laughs> yeah. track, you know, it's like the beginning, you know, it's like, who goes there? It's the King Ricky D. You know, the fake ass trumpets, you know, because it's like <laughs> yeah. late 80s, early 90s. I love how this like music sounds like, you know, that UV40 sort of like... Like, they're using, like, plastic sounds, but they're, you can tell they're really creative. But the weird thing about this is that it's, like, it's certainly, like, it's, 
it's that weird thing where it's like it's not made for kids, but it's certainly kid friendly. It's like Adventure Time. That's what their sound is. Oh, you know? okay. It's like this thing where it's like as I'm listening to it, it's like the fact that they're using these you know ch- like chintzy like clearly sort of fake sounding instruments is sort of like. But they're clearly these very talented dudes that are using them in this fun way. And at the same time, it has this sort of childish feel to it. Like, it mm. makes it feel like it's, like, specifically children's music. Like, in, like I was listening to it, I wrote down, I was like, this feels like Raffi and Weird Al did, like, a collab with, like, where they just did, like, abstract music, you know? Like, <laughs> it, it's funny because you touched on two things I wanted to bring to people's attention before we actually got into the review proper. Uh, first... Besides a music video of theirs being animated by one of the people who did a lot of Nickelodeon's animated bumpers back in the day, the reason I know who They Might Be Giants are, and a lot of millennials probably, is because of the two songs featured on Tiny Toon Adventures. Oh, sure. Istanbul and Particle Man. It's like a schoolhouse rock song, like where it's like, oh, man, this actually has a groove to it, but there's no real message or anything like that. You know, a little nonsense now and then is, you know, valued by the wisest men, right? That sort of thing. You know, it's, mm. always, it's like there's a weird abstractness to it, but then, you know, there, there will be times where they get very literal when they want to uh, <laughs> present you a message, which I definitely enjoyed. Um, we'll get to it in a second. The other thing I was going to say was you mentioned Weird Al. Um... If anyone's heard the song "Everything You Know Is Wrong," oh yes, off um, "Bad Hair Day," that's mm-hmm. a style parody of uh, <laughs> "They Might Be Giants." Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of semi-random imagery with the same kind of style. Oh, but that song makes too much sense. <laughs> I was torn as to what album I wanted uh, to bring to the yes. show because. <laughs> Originally, uh, I wanted us to do John Henry. John Henry, yeah, and I listened to it all, all the way through, and I was like, wow, this is a solid ass album. Oh, you did? I, yeah, yeah, but I, I hadn't oh, made shit. any notes. I hadn't made any notes. You know, I do the thing oh. where I like listen through twice. Um, but I was just thinking, like, you know, I, I, I'll listen to more than that might be Giants. I enjoyed this album. And also, also, because I had that feeling when I first listened to it, I was just like, oh, is this going to be the one with the songs on Oh, it's not the one with the songs on it. And then news came to me, like, you know, a couple days ago. It was just like, hey, do you want to do the one with the songs on it? And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's exactly it. And as much as I did enjoy that album for the most part. <laughs> like, if, if I wanted someone to check out They Might Be Giants... John Henry would be the album I would have them start with because I think it's the most easily accessible music wise, but a lot of the songs kind of sound the same. It's their first album with a band. Everything up until that point is just the the two Johns and some, and some featured musicians on like drums or whatever. Like they have a drummer on this album, but a lot of the instrumentation are samples but John Henry is the first album where they actually had a full band and instruments. And I really like a lot of the songs on that album. Like, it has a lot of my favorites. I think it's just a little too safe. So I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. No. Flood is the breakthrough because uh, Birdhouse in Your Soul is their only, like, charting hit. How did get Constantinople not burn him up? Birdhouse had that alternative... MTV crossover appeal. It's like my first abstract, you know, uh, art rock music. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. (laughs) So that's why I was like, you know what? Let's have fun. Let's go with the one that has the songs everybody knows. But yeah, I didn't know you actually listened to John Henry already or else I wouldn't have even suggested another one. But I'm glad you liked John Henry and didn't mind listening to another one. So what were your uh, main takeaways on uh, Flood? Favorite tracks, least favorite tracks? Well, real quick, I just want to say my whole experience with them was like, yeah, seeing, uh, like, not knowing who it was, but of course, hearing that uh, song, Constantinople song, of being like, god damn, that's a bopper. Um, <laughs> you know, all my life, I'd be like, who the fuck are those guys, you know? And then, uh, randomly, uh, Cartoon Network, you know, they did that uh, They did that whole block that I'll, I'd still love to this day, and I wish I could get, uh, I need to burn those fucking fucker songs on CD. You know, that whole, uh, animated block where there would be a whole bunch of music videos with like uh ed ed and eddie uh or um oh they had two music videos actually the my best friend plank and the uh 
They did a Courage the Cowardly Dog one. Yeah, and, and that's the one I was thinking of. And so I was thinking, yeah. like, I was like, oh my God, I fucking love that one. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I, I, were we recording yet when I said, what's her? <laughs> my oh, favorite so. uh, catchphrase becomes like kind of funny. It's this oh. bag says, because, you know, they do that thing where it's like, they're clearly like reusing the same like sound clips, you know, and it's one of those oh, things where okay. as a kid, it becomes like kind of funny and infectious after a while. The fact that they're like saying it the exact same way, you know? Well, Curious guy the dog, yeah. And so I was like, it was one of those things where it's just like I keep hearing songs from these guys, but I just it just never came across me to like actually check out a full album. The Malcolm in the Middle theme. Oh my God, yes, that's true. See, I feel like I keep seeing this sentence fragment. It's popping up everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> they might be giant. This ominous sounding. It's like they're coming over the hills from afar. <laughs> they even did the, uh, the the Daily Show theme when when John Stewart was the host. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? No. <laughs> Get you the are fuck everywhere, out of man. These guys got hit. Fuck the charts. They got hit songs and people in America's fucking uh, hearts. <laughs> it's subliminal, ironically, because that was a track on John Henry. <laughs> people know them. Like, you might not know you heard them, but you've heard them, you know? So, yeah, I hear the first track and I'm like, what in the world are we in for? And then I heard Birdhouse and you're slow. And I remember I'd heard this one before. And it's such a strange, fun song where it's just like, uh. where it just keeps moving around like in the chord progressions where they like, they don't like want you to catch up with where the resolution of the chords are, you know? It's just like, oh, yeah. what are you doing? Like, and I was like, it's like a roller coaster slide of a song, you know? Like, this is for others what Gorillaz probably was for me, right? Where it's just like, Oh man, like these songs are just going these weird directions and I don't know if they make sense, but they have this fun part and this guy's doing this really kind of like, it's not like annoying voice, but it's like that Bob Dylan sort of like really leaning into the nasalness of my voice, you know, like. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> there are two different Johns who sing on this album. Yeah, and of course, I think... they're like a two-headed uh, singing duo, <laughs> the way they work. Either you like both of their voices or you have a strong preference. And I can see how people might not love uh, the one's more nasal delivery. I'm your only friend. I'm not your only <laughs> friend, but I'm a little glowing friend. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. what is this? <laughs> it's so infectious, though, Birdhouse. Yeah. Like, there could definitely be a strong argument made uh, that Birdhouse is one of their best songs. When we went to see them live the first time, because I think we've went to see them two or three times now, when they did Birdhouse, I'll never forget it, there was this elderly couple who were like in their 70s or 80s. They popped out of their fucking chairs and started like doing like a couple's dance to it. And it was the sweetest fucking thing of just like, this resonates with every fucking body. <laughs> like, this is gonna fucking touch you. It's abstract, but not like ominous or scary for the most part. And that's what I find but interesting. But they can be. Yeah, but like, I feel like most <laughs> people, when they do do abstract, like the main thing of it is to have a weird sort of like, off kilter, but to a scary way. But this feels more like I'm going to a strange land and I think it's going to be weird, but like, it's actually just Toontown. And I'm just like, oh, wait, oh, okay. I just need to get used to the rules. But like, you know what I mean? Oh, like, it's yeah. Not, you know, it's not actually scary. It's just kind of like, I'm just not used to this. Like, like, it's like getting my sea legs going on a boat, you know? Like, this one I was like, it's a bit of a more simple meat and potatoes kind of rock joint. Feels a little doo wop It's when like I a country it. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, like, just the, the kid, like, the sort of, like, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, uh, the music on Rugrats, this music, right? Like, it has oh. this very, like, abstract, you know, feel to it. And it's using these, like, you know, clearly, like, fake-sounding things, but at the same time, like, you know, as I think about, like, the Rugrats music, it's, like, it's using these sort of fake, synthy sounding things as a sort of way to, like, you know, emulate a kid kind of, like, you know, getting used to the world, right? Like, you know, seeing the world for the first time and, like, it's kind of primitive. I never really thought about that connection, but in Lucky Ball and Chain, especially towards the end, you can hear it. There's, like, a sample of, it's like a vocal sample of someone just going, like, no, no. And then you go to Rugrats, and they have it, like, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. And it's just, again, another vocal sample preset yeah. to a keyboard. 
this fucking Mark Mothersbaugh, I will recommend a Devo album next time if we uh, fucking I, go down oh, that road. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I just want to say, like, you know, the more I think about, like, uh, theme songs for, like, kids shows, like, man, we really, they really were tossing pearls before us swine back in the 90s. Like, holy shit. Fuck, when you look at them, like, goddamn, they might be giants multiple times. The fucking B-52s, the goddamn um, oh. um, 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 Devo, goddamn, like, Jesus Christ. Like, I think about, like, you know, there's all this nostalgia for the 80s. I'm sorry. All right, I, and I'm gonna say it. I'm a, as a '90s baby, I'm gonna plant my fucking flag and say it. Yeah. Oh, it's all this nostalgia for the '80s and all these cartoons. Your cartoons were just trying to sell you toys. '90s was when motherfuckers started getting creative and really doing like, "Yo, are we really just gonna do this?" Yeah, all right. So there's this band that I used to listen to. Fuck it, we're gonna give them the theme song. You know, like yeah, <laughs> you could see that so much back then. In the '80s, it was basically a commercial jingle was the theme song. Yeah, and in the '90s, they actually had like actual like established bands bringing Let's make this themes. a presentation yeah and, and i'm not hating on the songs today but i don't think there's a lot of attention well well no there's attention but they're they're usually way shorter like they're kind of yeah. in and out yeah like the like the adventure time theme i love the adventure time theme but it's, it's in the and flag, out yeah the, the flagship uh, one but yeah the, the steven universe theme mm, it's in oh, and out oh yeah yeah like, they're all iconic in their own way, and everyone has nostalgia for them. There are themes from the 90s that I would yeah, gladly just put on a playlist. Yeah, Animaniacs yeah. fucking Hey Arnold? The Hey Arnold theme is dope. Oh my god, I could put all of the music from Hey Arnold. The, the beginning theme, the ending theme. Come on it's now. So now so jazzy. I gotta do it. Wait, now I gotta do it. Now I gotta write that down. We. <laughs> I gotta do a fucking uh, playlist. I just gotta rip all these fucking songs, put them on a CD, kick it with with some friends on a on a Friday night, and just like let that play. Like that's that definitely sounds like a night. <laughs> then we got Istanbul. I had to quote here because I thought this was interesting. It says, uh, "When we were recording the Flood album, we had bought these Casio FD1 samplers. I basically spent a couple of weeks in my house recording every single thing I could figure out." how to record and playing it back on the keyboard. And so all of these things that you hear in Istanbul are samples, except for the violin solo at the beginning and the trumpet in the middle. The thing that sounds like an accordion is actually a melodica that's been sampled. In the even old New York part, it's a Coke bottle being blown into uh, for the chord. The song has a very unusual texture. The song later, uh, Hearing Aid, we're in the middle of it, it's like a sample of a recording of a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> like, it's just anything yeah. they had lying around. I legit went right before this track came on because it kind of sounds like a little, like, you know, the, like there's just like kind of like setting up music kind of happening at the beginning. There's no like real concrete, like music, music happening, you know? And I was just like, and I had the moment, I was like, oh yeah, and they also did the Istanbul. I wonder which out. And then it started playing. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Uh, and it starts off really slow too. It kind of yeah. creeps in. It's yeah. like. You didn't think I was here, bitch. Here I am. Uh, they might be giants. <laughs> it just kind of opens the door a crack, and it's like, uh, surprise. And it kicks <laughs> it open, and it, it's like a one-man band thing coming through. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Uh, this song well, is all well, over the place. One-man band with two heads, you know? <laughs> then we get to Dead. Uh, I remember Dead. that would be in, like, it, 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 it's not like a, you know, uh, blow blow down the door and it's the other one, but I really like the melody on, on that uh, um, that hook. Am I alive and there's nothing that I want to do? <laughs> like, oh my God. And uh, what is like, now it's, uh, the way it like just feels like it's flowing down a path or something like that, you know, with the melody. Now it's over, I'm dead, and I haven't done anything that I want. Or I'm still alive and there's nothing I want to do. But the the way they sing it is just like ooh, yeah. it's so pleasing because they got the doubled like like the dual vocals like both of them singing at the same time. So you got the uh -huh. like the different sounds there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did want to quote because there's the line that says, um, "I never apologized for when I was eight years old and I made my younger brother have to be my personal slave." Yeah. It says. There's no real little brother. We would never confess to something like that in a song. <laughs> and now, they said it's about being reincarnated or something like that when people were trying to interpret it. But when I was just listening to it, I, I, I can't remember if this was exactly on the money or not, but is that it, I thought it was about like being reincarnated 
and seeing yourself like in the middle of like you not appreciating your life while you are oh. something that is like way more boring. Like so it's saying yeah. like he's reincarnated as a bag of groceries. So he's just like sitting there and he can't do anything while like ambulatory, you know, version of himself he's looking at is just kinda like, eh, I'm just kinda like, you yeah, know, I'm bored. I don't want to do anything. It can be worse, dude. You can yeah. be a bag of fucking groceries. <laughs> I think hearing aid was fine. Um, hearing aid is definitely... It stands out, especially because of how much weird shit they throw at the end of it. This sounds like the, uh, the song from the Rocco's Modern Life movie soundtrack, where they go like hyper hard on the 90s social commentary, but it's still really goofy, as exemplified through the weirdly was squeaky fake trumpet part that keeps coming in. <laughs> You know what's funny is that minimum wage reminds me of Rocco. Oh, oh, oh well, we'll get to that one in a second. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, for, uh, oh, and because I was just thinking about this, like the fact that it starts with uh, the first lyric is Frosty the Supervisor. And I was thinking like, oh my God, like because it's such like a child's album so far. I was thinking like, oh my God, we are not doing a weird abstract Frosty the Snowman cover. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what is happening right now? <laughs> it could be anything. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know what the fuck you expect from these guys at this point. <laughs> um, but wh- if we're talking about, like, the songs that I didn't like as much, honestly, it's a bit around the tail end, like, right before the tail end. I feel like uh, the songs, like, Whistling in the Dark is mm. just, it's silly, but not silly enough. I agree. Like, it's just, like, I feel like, you know, this is the Tim Burton Oingo Boingo voice sounding that you know like the danny elfman uh doing a low voice uh, da, 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 but it just doesn't really go anywhere and it's just like yeah it, so it just feels a little too silly for its own sake and so it's just kind of like okay like I, I don't know i think it's just, if you're just doing something that's like big and like and i also felt this way about the other on the other album they did another one of these like doing a really low voice like oh do not forsake me and it's one of those things where it's like i appreciate the musicality and like oh being a little wonky but like i think it was when you slow down so much you're kind of like expecting something to be coming you know and yeah. you're just like are you just doing a paul robinson song right now or like yeah, what I is happening i didn't really dig that one either hot cha was okay it, it was a nice mm-hmm. little you know 90s da- uh, shaking dancey joint you know women and men again i feel like we're going back to the renaissance period with this one yeah it's more like a sh- like a sea shanty yeah yeah i was just like this is cool but and then Sapphire Bullets of Love, I feel like I kind of liked for how like plinkly and I don't know how to say other than like, you know, crystally blue it sounded. Like it was nice and psychedelic. But I was just like, after a while, I, I think I was looking at some of these songs, I was like, are you shitting me here? Like what is going on with these short ass tracks? Like, come on, man, like this is actually yeah, sounds really good. Like, like barely <laughs> even two minutes, yeah. Yeah, like <laughs> Um But that's about it for the tracks that I really didn't didn't like, but let's Skirt back up. <laughs> we gotta go back. We gotta rewind the track. Roll back up. Rewind, selector. <laughs> we need to go back to your racist friend. Oh, buddy. And boy, do we. <laughs> Ooh, fuck me, dude. Oh, man. Can I tell you? I love discovering these moments so much. <laughs> On these, like, 90s, you know, alt rock sort of, like, bands who are kind of like, yeah, we're kind of doing our thing. And, you know, we're, like, have our own unique sound. And, like, what's all these racist going to our shows? What the fuck? Oh, fuck out of here. <laughs> like, you know. And, like, Every band has one. Right. But I love it, though. It's, like, the thing that, like, marks them as, like, yeah, you're one of the cool guys. Okay. Yeah, you're one of the cool. Okay. Like, you know, I, like, I love seeing it so much. And I love it. Like, I, you know, I feel like <laughs> it's such a, it's a Dolly Parton twist. You know, it's the sort uh. of, like, oh, you're cooler than I thought you were. Oh, that's awesome. You know, like, because, like, so many times you can, you know, r- listen to a song and uh, come across a, oh, wow, oh, man, this, the, buddy, this guy's got some regressive ideas about women. Oh, who, who hurt you, my friend? <laughs> you know, and you just got to, like, push past it, you know? <laughs> I guess they kind of wanted to keep more apolitical in their music. Right. Like, is this us? Yeah, like. Yeah, but the other one was like, man, why not? Let's fucking do it. Like, if anyone actually, like, pays attention to what They Might Be Giants is all about, like, 
They've got the fucking Science is Real album. They're super outspoken about queer shit, like very anti-racist. They tackled it in in a unique way that didn't feel forced. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, because I feel like there's, uh, you know, there's the people doing the Nazi punks fuck off. Like, that's the aggressive aggro way that some bands want to do it. Because like, oh, we're punk and we're, you know, you know, Scott, so we're going to say fucking be in your face. And like, they're like, I feel like they're you know, still doing that too. They still have the same mood, but it's from these sort of like quirky, awkward dudes who are like, you know, I'm not going to like punch you in the face or anything like that, but like, uh, I'm not going to let that go. What just happened? You got to go. Yeah, you know <laughs> you what I'm saying? You got to take that shit. Like, you got to take that shit somewhere else. <laughs> like, I love that. I love that they like have this moment like, okay, we all had fun and we're being on the here, but like, uh, I don't like what you just said. Hold on a minute. Like, <laughs> it's kind of aggressive in the music, but then it's got like that, fun funky breakdown towards yeah, the middle yeah. where like the fucking trumpets come through and it's like a little fun dance like song in the middle but yeah it's the whole context of you're at a party you got a friend there your friend brings someone you might not be that familiar with and oh, they start man. saying some shit and now you got that awkward kind of like i know my friend <laughs> doesn't isn't saying racist stuff but his friend is saying some racist stuff. Like, is so he cool with that? So he's gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> like... <laughs> I, I love the, the one part, like, when they actually, like, have the exchange, and it oh, says... Oh, um, the fact that... Yeah, I love that. The song actually progresses, like, you hear what happens next, yeah. Out from the kitchen to the bedroom to the hallway, your friend apologizes. He said he could see it my way. He let the contents of the bottle do the thinking. You can't shake the devil's hand and say you're only kidding. (laughs) (laughs) And this is such an iconic line that, like, I remember hearing other, like, people talk about this before. And then when I heard this line, I was like, oh, this is who they were representing. Like, had that, like, spark mode of, like, yes, this is the, like, we're going down in the annals of, like, you know, rock history because of a line like this. Like, you you can't shake the devil's hand and say you're only kidding. You can't be say all that racist shit and then be like, act like that's not how you really think about those people. Like, no, 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 no. The sober man, the the drunk man speaks the sober man's mind on some of these things, you know. I got to give a shout out to Knowledge Fight, the podcast I've been kind of obsessed with for a few weeks now, that their whole premise is they, each episode they'll review either an old episode or a a new episode of the Alex Jones show, and they will go through it and call him out on all his bullshit I, I started listening when they were really covering his most recent trial. And there are episodes where he gets very drunk. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I said all that stuff. But, you know, I think I he even said that during the um during the Sandy Hook trial. They're like, oh, I, I had a bottle of whiskey that day. And it's like, oh that's God. not an excuse <laughs> for what you said, man. So, like, that's definitely what I'm reminded of with this song. It's like he let he let the uh, the contents of the bottle do the thinking like that's not an excuse. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, like you're making. Oh my god, we don't even have time to get into that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it but, reminded but, me. But of. I, I like just the, like the nuance and how this lines calls out that sort of racism that gets kind of smoothed over in a lot of you know like white circles probably right where it's just like you know it's yeah. just like well i think being kind of a dick but you know they're my friend i've known them for a while like i don't want to like you know make a problem of it da, da, da. and like this is the stuff that keeps people from being challenged you know and, and it's the mm-hmm. it's the white moderate it's the centrism that's the real issue right it's like not wanting to be like hey bro that's not okay like you can't be like doing that you know what i mean like and i'm not gonna allow you to just be in my circle and you know uh, affect my ability to hang out with other people because of you know what i'm saying like you bring up an interesting point too when you mentioned uh nazi punks fuck off and all that is that like at a punk show especially in the 80s when everything is fuck Reagan, everybody just kind of there has the air of I'm progressive. I say fuck Reagan because punk is inherently a very political genre. Yeah. This is not like this is not inherently a political genre. So when you say it has the potential of calling out centrists because in this space, in a Mm. they might be giant space, it does kind of feel like like non-judgmental, you know, because like we're not talking about politics here, but for them to just be like, hey, you know, if you think we're going to be cool with that, just because we're not talking about that, <laughs> uh, right. that's not the case. Like, <laughs> yeah. and, and like they absolutely did not 
have to do that on this right. album. It's like, and, it comes out of fucking nowhere, but it ends up, like, being one of the most memorable songs and one of the best songs. Yeah, and it's such a great moment of just, like, again, like, so far it's just been, like, abstract. I'm not really sure what the message is. And then it's like, no, uh, no we're going to make sure you know what the message of this one is. <laughs> this is where the party ends. I can't stand here listening to you and your racist friend. I know politics bores you, but I feel like a hypocrite talking to you and your racist friend. Like, it's that specific. That's the specific line I'm t- I, I, I was, yeah, yeah, trying to get at. It's just sort of, like, Dude, I can't deal with it. Like, I can't be like, you know what I mean? Like, I I, I have that devil on my, uh, angel and devil on my shoulder. And I'm just sitting here and looking at the situation like, nah, man, I can't be silent. You're dude, this is being racist, bro. What's going on? Like, you know? And it goes beyond politics. Like, I know politics bore you. This to me is not politics. This is a human decency. Mm. You know, like this goes beyond that. So... I can't just chalk it up to a political a, a political disagreement. Like your friend's just being a dick, and he's got to go. <laughs> mm. You know, you hear twisting. I, I feel like this one should have been a hit song. And then I was like, <laughs> twisting. Yeah, I was just like, what, oh, what yeah. was this one? Not as bad. It's one of those like it sounds so good, it doesn't matter what it's about. Even though like yeah, no, it feels like it actually like makes sense. But then when I hear we want to rock, this is the one that like the going back to the kid sort of like thing where it's like, this is where I'm tracking. It doesn't make sense. But I can still imagine this being like a hit, like for the kids just being like, we want to rock to tie a piece of string around. And then it goes, um, I want a prosthetic forehead we are, we are, to wear yeah. on my head. I want a prosthetic forehead to put upon my head or, now, or something like that. <laughs> and, and it's like, Everybody wants one of these. It's a funny conceit saying everyone has this problem when it's really about the problem of the person singing about wanting a prosthetic forehead. It's hard to make the argument that everyone wants one. You're enlisting everyone else. (laughs) This seems to confirm its senselessness and also that it's a niche subcultural trend at most, but which the singer believes is or is going to become a significant mainstream trend. What is this? Everybody wants a rock to tie a piece this, of string this is around. This uh, ve- Veggie Tales. Everybody got a water buffalo. Yours is fast, but mine is slow. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Everybody, you know, uh, did you ever watch Veggie Tales? And they would do like. The- I was just gonna say thank you so much for bringing the the more religious uh, upbringing perspective into it. Or we're because- bringing all the kids. All the kid music stuff in today. Because <laughs> first of all, Veggie Tales was a little after my time, ah. and also like, yeah, I just never really watched it. But thank mm. you so much for bringing that up. What was that about <laughs> Water Buffalo? You know, in between like the bigger stories that are about like actual like mm. lessons or whatever, they would have like, oh, you know, Larry sings a silly song or something like that, and mm. uh, I think it's the Water Buffalo song. Yeah, which is like everybody's got a Water Buffalo. Yours is best of mine is slow. And someone jumps in and is like. What are you doing? You've got to stop. And it's like, and it's like, what? What's wrong? And it's just like, dude, if you do a song about like how everybody's got a water buffalo, that's gonna make kids want to ask their parents, like, well, where's my water buffalo? It's like we're not gonna be responsible <laughs> for that. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, yeah. And then, so, it's like, I hadn't thought about that. You see, and it, you, the thing about that show is that, like, yes, it is very like oh, Christian lessons, like, but it is actually genuinely very funny. <laughs> Yeah, that show, that show fucking hits. It, 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 I think it still kind of holds up, maybe. Like, it probably watching, does. Yeah, I remember watching a couple of them. Like, it doesn't, it, it never hits the uh, the bad side of, uh, you know, they, in, much in the same way of They Might Be Giants. I feel like, yeah, they, they're the They Might Be Giants of Christi- Christian uh, CGI entertainment. When you fucking put it that way, <laughs> I, I can't not watch it now. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, you know, if someone happens to be watching, you don't need to necessarily be like, like, oh, what a, is there going to be some shit about them coming out against childless couples or something like that? You know? Oh, no. <laughs> the sanctity of the family. Oh, you got to keep the Christ. family together. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> keep the um, faith. It feels like there's some TV show that this is supposed to be from, especially when we get to the... Uh, uh, the second from the last track. The uh, They Might Be Giants. Yeah, the Duckman style theme song. It's the penultimate song, but it's like, hey, we're going to introduce ourselves real quick. <laughs> like, yeah. what? And and it, it doesn't really introduce them, but like, it's... No. <laughs> 
it, it just reminds you the name of the band a bunch. Like, oh, okay, it's They Might Be Giants, boy. I love so much. Uh, yeah, oh, that weird out, uh, boy. Like at the end of uh, one of his polkas, you know, where they have those points where like, they might, be, they might be rain, they might be eat, they might be frying up a stalk of weed. And then like, it kind of doesn't resolve. And then you hear that sample like, hang on now. <laughs> like, I love yeah. that. <laughs> hang on I want to know. To make the merry-go-round go faster so that everyone needs to hang on tighter just to keep from being thrown to the wolves. Like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, it's, like, like you said earlier, it, it, like, they verge on ominous. Yeah. They Might Be Giants a lot of time kind of remind me of um, the Willy Wonka tunnel scene. Yes. <laughs> kind of cheery. But then it just randomly gets creepy and eerie. You know, like they are, they might be giants is that if like, it was just like, it's the modern day and they got, they might be giants to like, you know, do the music video for that scene or whatever. And they're like, we're not going to cut off a chicken's head, but we're going to make it pretty weird, but we're not cutting off chicken's heads. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we ain't going to show you that, but we are going to definitely creep you out in, in some degree. Yeah. <laughs> they're definitely my introduction to what I talk about on the show a lot. The, song that sounds happy but the lyrics are far more sinister if yeah. you actually pay attention to them yeah this was my introduction like mm. like mountain goats do that really well where it's oh, like oh the song is so peppy and cheery and then you listen to it and it's depressing as hell like oh yeah. no <laughs> other ones we didn't touch on uh someone keeps moving my chair oh yes that was another one of the ones i was gonna be like oh i love this one <laughs> Another one of those, like, pulling on your brain with the, the, the uh, melody that they keep uh, hitting really hard there. It's definitely the one that gets the most kind of dark, where it says, uh, Would you mind if we balance this glass of milk where your visiting friend mysteriously was killed? Yeah. Would it be okay with you if we wrote a reminder of things we'll forget to do to you otherwise using a green magic marker, if that's all right, on the back of your head? Yeah, Mr. Horrible, Mr. Horrible, we're not done with you yet, Mr. Horrible. Like, oh no, yeah, what, what are you doing? That? This is like, leave my, him alone. This is like Charlie Brown as a really small baby being like, you know, still getting, you know, still getting shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're going to ride on your head. And most importantly, <laughs> we're going to move your chair a bunch. <laughs> uh, minimum wage. Woo boy. <laughs> Best track yeah. on the album. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> and it's, it's like you get a one-two punch, too, because minimum wage is, like, not even 30 seconds, I don't think. Yeah, like, four, I think it's 46 seconds. It's like, this might be uh, the running for, like, best, like, less than a minute song. <laughs> yeah, and it's just moved around samples of Frank Sinatra's cover of Downtown. Really? <laughs> Yeah, they just took the instrumental of the opening of the song and, like, rearranged it so in, in a way. It just makes it its own thing. But And especially the way it uses the little, like, low parts with the goo-goo parts. Because, like, that's the part that sounds the most ominous. And it's that, like, I, when I heard it, the first thing I felt was that, like, this feels like, again, like a Rocco's Modern Life. But it feels like it's doing the social commentary, but it's flipping on Flintstones and somehow the Jetsons in a weird way. Because, like, it, yeah, because, you know, you hear that primitive sounding woo. And, you know, the whip, you know, and so it has that old style feel. But yet at the same time, like you hear these like futuristic sounding things. So it's just like, well, where, where is this really happening? You know, in this weird space. But it's like no matter where it is, uh, capitalism is a, it, it got its whip a cracking, you know, <laughs> it could end with a stronger song than Road Movie to Berlin for sure. I was like, this is fine. Why is this the last one? <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't have put it there. Why not just end on the they might be giants? <laughs> the, the freaking that would have been yeah, that would have been an awesome way to end voice it. they were doing. There. What did you walk away with this one? Uh, four out of five. I would agree, either like four or four and a half, because there's definitely some that like I, w I was worried, and it's why I initially didn't suggest that I initially I suggested John Henry first because <laughs> I thought that oh, I thought you that might to go be the respectable. You wanted to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a feeling that that, that you might be more uh, critical of the weird abstractness of this one. So I was like, oh. I don't know. Oh, but come on now. Like, you know I love this 90s animated fucking ska two-tone army. Oh, I got to write that one down, too. <laughs> you got to write Kablam! <laughs> we got the masses. Let's get into hardcore. <laughs> 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 
the Queen Patra. So now we're shifting it over. We're shifting the ball over to a rap critics court. So mm-hmm. I, I just wanted to say, go again. This is a, an artist that my mom, uh, my mom used to listen to a lot of like Jamaican music. And, you know, especially amongst the Bob Marley's, there was the, you know, more contemporary artists that they were listening to, you know, the rappers that was doing slack, you know, like, so it's like, you know, uh, yeah, reggae music, but it's like modern, you know, faster. And we, we're going to be speaking a little, a little rude. You know what I'm saying? This that mm-hmm. dance hall so, sort of in, the, in, a, in a new age, you know, sort of thing. I grew up with like Shaba and Patra and on like long trips, my mom would play their music non fucking stop. And so like, I've had to hear, like, I've heard this music like for, you know, all of my life and like that sort of thing where it's like you know they speak in of course this really deep patois um that's kind of hard to hear if you're you know not acclimated to it directly but like if you listen to like sean paul or or beanie man you're acclimated to you know i mean you understand uh, how how the general feel of it is uh lots of fun breezy you know dancey joints with repeated verses so you know for me as a kid i was just like why can't people understand what they're saying they repeat it twice what like how are they not able to catch it <laughs> So, uh, so for me, as someone listening to this a million times, I was just like, man, you know what? People always know me for being the, oh, you, 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 we know you rap critic. You listen to the lyrical spirits, miracle motherfuckers. You listen to the motherfuckers who are talking about, you know, planets and, and fucking quasars and shit or whatever the fuck, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. But, but fuck that. <laughs> Sometimes you got to have a little fun and listen to some shit that maybe you don't fully understand everything, but the point is you're in the groove. You're locked into the motherfucking groove and having a good goddamn time. So for me, listening to these songs that didn't always know exactly what they're saying but they were clearly sexual so i was always like mom yeah. why are you giving me this cringe thing of like <laughs> listening to these songs on long trips where <laughs> with, oh. so i dedicate i dedicate this one uh, since it's my my mom's birthday month uh, i dedicate this uh, review to her <laughs> for, <laughs> oh, to, to, to put that cringe out there and be like yeah mom you, you we were listening to this. why were we listening <laughs> Oh, God. I started listening to this. <laughs> oh, yes, I gotta know your experience. <laughs> yeah, so so I put it on, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, it's Dance Hall. So I start listening to it, and I pull up on Genius, and <laughs> Genius ain't there for me. Uh, Look, they weren't gonna help you. <laughs> no, no. Um, there have been times in the past where we've been on the show, and we got, like, album requests, and it's like, oh, man, this isn't, like... Either it's not in English. Usually it's an album that's not in English. And it's like, oh man, I the lyrics are not provided. So I don't have anything to go off of. Here, I imagine it's mostly in English. But the accent yeah. is so thick that I, I just, I gave up trying to even decipher <laughs> what was being said half the time. So I was like, all right, <laughs> I, guess I guess I'm just going to try to fend for myself. Just feel your way through in the dark of, of this album. By the way, the name of it is uh, uh, Patra's Queen of the Pack, her Queen first the LP pack. in 1993. She had a second one in 95 that I think um, is like the more like beefed up in production. Of course, like as the 90s go along, you know, it is the more like mm. no, you can't just use the simple samples. You got to like beef it up because, you know, it's P. Diddy's here and all that type of shit. But like oh. this is like her first album out the gate and you know as sort of like a you know this is this female artist doing like hardcore sex rhymes like now what you know like and so that's the sort of thing like as a kid you know it's kind of like ah what is, what is this music for but like you know as i got older i learned to appreciate it's like you know this woman being outspoken sexually but also having like other messages too it's not just that as you uh listen through on the album but uh we'll get to those joints in just yeah, a second you're gonna um, have to shed some light on those for sure because <laughs> for me it was just basically uh listening to the tracks uh instrumentally and it's never been my thing per se I just kind of thought it was okay, mainly because... Just feeling it. I mean, it is a little dated. It, like, it is from the freaking 1993, and you can kind of hear the sort of, like, edges of sort of, like, oh, man, they really were, like, this was kind of, like, a really being put together sort of production, you know what I mean? Taped together, you know? I think it's because, well, for two reasons. For one, I don't think the music ever really matches the same intensity as Patra's uh, vocals. I think Oh, my God, yeah, yeah. They're a little bit more... Uh, subdued toned, compared to her, you're more like, subdued. Yeah, to yeah her so more it just kind of feels like it's yeah. just kind of going. And mm-hmm. usually, it's not. It doesn't switch up too much. It's just kind of like one beat that just kind of repeats, and that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, but the song's like four or five minutes long, so you're stuck with this beat for 
a good minute. And you know what I think it is? I think it's like, you know, the, the vocals are there are another instrument in the track when it comes to like the sort of dance hall thing, right? Like mm -hmm. it really is supposed to be like hearing how they like, you know, flex their vocals over this track of this sort of like round of a beat. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, now, while it is like that for uh, a lot of the tracks and, you know, like I'll definitely admit it's it's certainly not a I don't come to the come to you thinking like, what, what do you think of this unmitigated classic, you know, but for sure. But I, <laughs> Like, but as I look across the landscape, like, man, I feel, I feel like I see so many people like doing shout outs, like, oh yeah, reggae dance all, and people always, you know, sample it and rip it off. But no, I never hear anyone mention Queen Patra, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. I think we're like, man, let me fucking show some, let me throw some fucking love over here. Cause it's like, we need to fucking respect the, the fucking, you know, originals, you know what I mean? Like, even as someone who's not, who doesn't have the nostalgia, who doesn't have the same life experiences with it. Yeah. I think it's kind of fucked. Cause this, this definitely would be, uh, in my estimation, um, a standout in that field, you know, in that genre. And like, right. yeah, it, it, as soon as you told me, I was like, I've never heard of them. And mm -hmm. granted, like I said, it's not a genre I listen to normally anyway, but right, right. there's plenty of genres I don't listen to, but I'm, I've heard of the people at least through like cultural osmosis and zeitgeist and stuff like that. But qu when you, when you said Queen Patra, I was like, yeah, I don't know who the fuck that is. Like, that was completely lost on me. I was like, whatever you say, RC, I'll, I'll go along. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I had no fucking clue. But yeah, I mean, she's definitely putting in the work here. But, like, I can't deny any of that. Um, I, I just think like, I probably would have enjoyed it more if I uh, if I knew the context, you know, if, yeah, if I knew what was uh, yeah. what was being talked about here. But you can fill in those gaps, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. So. We, we start with Hardcore, which is, you know, an okay track. I, I feel like that that track kind of represents the sort of, like, you know, mid-tier that uh, some of the sort of, like, just general sex uh, sex tracks are, you know what I mean? But it, it's a certain, like, solid introduction to her, you know, <laughs> vocality, especially with the Hardcore, but dun, 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 <laughs> yeah. hardcore dun, 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 dun. you're like, holy shit, like, you can hear the sex, like... <laughs> Um, and then we get track number two, which I, I feel like immediately is the sort of like breaking out from the sort of like general feel of a, a lot of the, like the sort of like, you know, keeping the tempo up feel of a lot of the album. But this one is like the sort of blast out single, especially when you're the dun, 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 dun. <laughs> hey fellas, you get Lynn Collins, the sultry siren of funk. Oh my goodness. Hey fellas, uh, uh, Slim Collins still talking to you, you and you too. You guys know who I'm talking to? Those of you who go out and stay out all night and half the day and expect us to be home when you get there. But that was back in the day, sweet thing. It's the 90s. Know what I'm screaming? Coming at you is the dance hall's Queen Patra to tell you you ain't doing nothing of us that we can't better do for ourselves. <laughs> I was like, oh <laughs> shit. And then it's like, so from now on, so you better. When it hits in, it's like, God damn. <laughs> Put your fucking fists in the air. <laughs> and and I did really enjoy the the bonus track, the the hip hop oh, yes. remix. Which sounds like more live. Like, yeah, it's insane. I, I was sitting here like, man, if the songs on here had this kind of energy, right, I think I would have yeah. enjoyed it more too. If they would have had a little bit more, yeah, the same care put into these tracks, yeah. Yeah, it's like, this is what I think it was missing for me personally. <laughs> I was like, this is where it's at. Mm hmm. And um, and I love how just the part where because uh, she doesn't come in for a while on this track, and it's probably mm. you know one of those things where they're like, L let the person that people can understand <laughs> sing for the first minute because we know this one might be it, you know. <laughs> and then, like they used to do this a lot, right? With like Shaba songs, you know, it'd be like, hey, champion lover, I'm gonna sing for the first minute, and it's like, who's the song again? Uh, wait, then I'm gonna knock you but all right, Shaba, right? <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they're trying to like swing for that big hit, you know. Um, mm. But uh, with this one, like, I, I love the the introduction that you kind of get because like it feels like the trumpet section feels like a fucking plane coming in for a landing. Like you hear that dun 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 dun, oh yeah, dun 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 dun, dun. and it's like. Burr. <laughs> like the way they introduce her voice and like her verse is so fucking intense. Drake is really missing out by not sampling the songs up here. <laughs> like bring some fucking attention and respect to Patra. Uh, why does that have to be Drake? Why have we assigned him? Why have we tacitly? No. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, someone you, who you could be benefit. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bring up Drake because he has a fault in this in this area. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he has a bit of a thing of doing. You know, this is an interesting intersection that we're having here. Like, They Might Be Giants is a band that has, like, nonsense lyrics, but, like, really interesting musicality. And, like, Patra makes sense if you know what she's saying, but it's just so, like, slanged out, like, that you just got to don't know so you just have to allow yourself to like just enjoy like the groove of what's happening you know like this yeah. is <laughs> um and then so uh queen of the pack another one uh, it's very solid snare in this joint um and i like how they do a little bit of the mix-up but again this is another one that feels like a little bit of like we're back down again you know to the sort of like normie joints um mm. Uh, but then I really love Poor People's Song. I love uh, the sort of like, you know, again, the, the little engine that could, that, that this song sounds like. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know, Poor People's <laughs> Song. Like it sounds like the immigrant boat, you know, with the piping red whistle coming in, you know. Oh. <laughs> do, do, do. People, that in any world where you suffer, my friend. Um, I really like this is a song that I always loved, you know, as someone who, again, I love like dancing, dance hall and all that fun stuff. But, you know, I still like songs that are, you know, saying something. And I, I do feel like sometimes like we can stereotype a, a certain genre, especially like this, of being like, oh, they just do the dance sex songs that are just like really explicit. But it's like, no, like, you know, there's still people, too, who are thinking about stuff that's happening in the world. And I, I always uh, like this song in particular. Uh, because of how it, you know, um, well, it, it, if you can understand what he's saying, uh, kind of <laughs> like becomes that thing of being like, hey, you know, like we should help the poor people of the world. And, you know, it's bullshit that we don't. And, you know, like the rich people, you know, make fun of the poor people. And that's why, like, you know, they get angry and want to fucking like stomp on, you know, fucking come attack your shit because you're like not respecting us and we're fucking working hard and all that shit. And then you call the police and then the revolution happens and da da da. Mm. And, you know, I, I like I fucking really enjoyed it. I was like coming back to it and especially hearing how specifically poignant she was saying like certain lyrics and being like, oh yeah, no, this is how this happens. Like, yeah, this is the fucking oblongs sort of uh thing where, you know, the rich people on the hill, you know. They, oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're wasted and run off and then they look down their noses at them and then like finally the fucking poor people can't fucking take it you know so yeah yeah i was like so i fucking definitely shout out to this song if you if you listen to um any of the ones off of this one definitely the uh the uh so far the um think was it yeah think about it mm -hmm. and uh poor people song if i if i'll throw two especially special ones out but uh going back to your experience how uh what were you what were the standout tracks for you i i'll, I'll ask uh, they all kind of blended together for me <laughs> <laughs> look at you <laughs> because like for, for, for me it didn't really like the beats didn't didn't switch up enough in my experience for me to mm. really pick any any standout tracks yeah, I, I, I hate, I feel really bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, just kind of saying that because I didn't really have that, that, that strong of an experience with it because yeah. it all just kind of, um, it all just kind of blended together for me. I remember Romantic Call being a standout. Yeah, I liked um, how, uh, like, Yo -Yo, okay. I like how Yo-Yo comes in with that one and how the drums, uh, do, like, they do switch out from, uh, they switch out from Patrick to Yo-Yo on that one. So I, thought mm. that, I always thought that was kind of fun. Like first, it's kind of like on the back foot sort of the drums, and then when Yo Yo comes in, it's sort of like, all right, now we're coming over to California, and then like switch. I was like, oh, okay, that's actually pretty cool. You know, it's like because first it's on a romantic call, do 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 do, and then in the case it, I was like, oh shit. Um, See, so yeah, that one still uh, still relatively holds up for me, um, but. Uh, Worker Man is the, the songs that are yeah, just like okay. so intensely just like leading into like illustrating that sexy mood. Those are the ones that I feel like are the like, oh, yeah, de definitely got to keep these gems for the you know what I'm saying? For the for the, you know, sexy Saturday night dance floors, you know, like we, we can't let these be forgotten is, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the sexiness can be picked up even if you don't know what's being said. Uh, let me see. There was sexual feeling, um, which. Like, I feel like Worker Man is, like, the the sex song jam of this whole mm. album. And all the other ones do kind of feel a little derivative of it. Like, Sexual Feeling right afterwards feels kind of like the part two to that. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Although I do like the one line that she has here. Like, think about, like, you know, Jamaican, like, rappers is like... 
just do little turns of phrase that are just so interesting and that just sounds so cool in a way that just like no one else would have said that in that way that makes it sound as cool. She has this one line where she goes like a like Jamaican girl with a sexy figure, men will climb through molten for something like that. Like <laughs> that men will climb through molten for like ooh. Jesus. <laughs> Um, then we get be protected, um, which again, the, I, I like this, like, you know, it's like, okay, we've had a bunch of, you know, we've had some fun with these sex toys, but like, for real guys, it's the, it's the nineties, you know, we, we just got out of the eighties. Let's, uh, you know, let's make sure we're wrapped up there. You know what I mean? Like, I appreciate an artist doing this, like, even though I'm in the venue of just doing the sex rap shit, but like, no, like, but we're not going to be stupid about it. You know, we're still going to put out, you know. Uh, this important message you know what I mean like you hear these songs from like the early 90s and there's a specific feel of it that if it's not like the specific tippity top brass you know having the production on it you know what I mean there's a sort of like uh, the only word I can think of is a bit dated you know feel of like you know, especially from early 90s to late 90s you know like late 90s mm. sounds like Willie style and all that shit that shit doesn't sound really as dated as like a if you listen to a red man song you know that immediately mm. kind of sounds like yeah you couldn't just throw this on a rotation people are going to be able to be pick up and be like wait this sounds kind of like this sounds like you know what it is it, this sounds like a 90s static uh, television you know what i'm saying oh. like it has that feel to it you, as soon as i say that you get what i'm saying right it's like it's yeah. not that it's like dusty it's just it's a sort of like crackle it in it you know like yeah yeah that yeah. i mean you know these people sa using samplers and stuff like that for the first time of course you know and so like you know this this era of people innovating that still needs to be like appreciated and respected but you like you kind of can't help but kind of notice that yeah like you said with the beats kind of feeling a little like they're in the same realm and not really like uh pushing out especially when you hear them in contrast to what are clearly the bigger hits like you know think about it and um um the worker man joint you know mm -hmm. um then yeah, wine and skills in knock knock and in the mood they they, they kind of she kind of like you know flows. I, I think in the mood is actually uh, the part three of the good sounding uh, it, it, you know intimate sexy sex jams. Um, mm -hmm. Because I did like how at the end, especially the way the sax like the legit like really uh, dope saxophone comes in at the end and kind of does that in the mood for love uh, melody flip that. Da -da -da -da. Mm. Da -da. Like I thought that was really cool, and I always appreciated that. Um, I, I partially wanted this just just for just to, so, for, so someone else could hear that. Like that's so cool. Like I wish yeah. someone else would appreciate that because the way that they play it over the like the beat, it's in such this like weird like it doesn't do it in like how you would expect someone to just like oh just integrate it in the normal way over the beat. Like they're doing it in this real slippery way where it's like playing over the off beats and stuff, you know. So I think that's mm. I just always thought that was really cool. And then of course we get to the jangly live feeling uh think about it uh remix at the end which is just like uh, as you listen to this album it's like and it is worth it to listen to the second part because there's the extra oomph that feels like is in it on this version in the same way that like um you know um let's get it well let's get it started uh by <laughs> black eyed peas <laughs> it's like it's fun but like the music video version where it's like let's get it started where they actually like added in some organic like you know piano and like drum parts and stuff like that like i like that version better you know what i mean um because it's like it, it, and so if i was listening to that album like i would legitimately listen to that first one and then i would like no i'm not gonna stop the record and listen to that second one because it, like it has so much more of an extra little flair to it that it's like it's worth its own listen you know did we talk about herbs sims in the city i played that game back in the day i i beat it if you could beat a sims game i think the whole point of the game was you you were you're supposed to impress and be friends with all the members of the black eyed peas and then you, and then you were considered cool oh i thought it was so, to like keep going until your god complex was satisfied that might have been the dlc i don't think i played that. <laughs> um but the theme song to the game is uh let's get it started sung <laughs> in simlish or at least i thought it was if you listen to it they recorded a similar version of the original album version with the ableist slur. The, were they still say it? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's still in Simlish, but you it, it, the song is called like La Gra Ratata. Oh. <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh no. Come on. <laughs> yeah, like, wait, like, yeah, I know what you could. Why couldn't you? Let's go. 
Ix Stupta or something like that. It so could have done that. And it's this game for kids. And no one thought to be like, oh, we're talking about Oh, yeah, we're talking about Rattatas. Yeah. Like, no, man. As far as this, I would uh, I would give this an Outsiders uh, three. Man, I, I give it a three and a half myself. Like even yeah. I will, you know, admit that it's not a perfect record. It's just a you know fun nostalgic you know thing to always, that I kind of like come back to. Like you know that that I enjoy you know because it's been played in my ears a million times. So of course it it's that uh, nostalgia nesting point when I hear it. You know what I mean? You kind of got me talking about what we were or thinking about what we were talking about with the Bjork album about how like. The one we talked about debut. Hey, everybody, look at me. This is what I can do. But post the follow up is like the OK, now that I got your attention, here's what I'm really about. You kind of got me thinking about that with Patra. It's like, didn't you say that like the follow up is like this, but amped up more? Yeah, the production, I feel like is more crisp because the first song I think of is uh, Pull Up to the Bumper, which is sampling the um, Grace Jones song from the 80s. Pull up to my bumper, baby. Pull. Oh, and you're yeah, like, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I think it's already, like, hits an higher clip. So maybe, you know, next time I might request, uh, request that one. Or I might do some other weird uh, 90s kid thing and be inspired by Because I think uh, you requesting the They Might Be Giants, I think that kind of inspired me for something. And I... I either can't remember what it is, or as soon as I remember, I'm going to say, oh, no, but not that. I'm not going to say it out loud because I want to keep it a secret until we get there. Yeah, you got you got to write it down. You got to slip it under, just slide it across the table, and I'll, I'll read it to myself. Word. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we could have this uh, episode of the podcast. We just, like, oh, shared a piece of our, our, our childhoods, you know, our, a little birdhouses in our souls. <laughs> we do the... Reviewer's choice every 10 episodes, and in between, uh, we deal with y'all's requests. And if you're curious, you can head on over to our Kofi, that is ko-fi.com slash going off, and there is where you can request an album to be reviewed on a future episode of the show. Twitter.com slash riffcoms for me, twitter.com slash it's the rap critic, or it's, it's the real rap critic? No, it's the rap critic, and on Instagram, I'm uh, the real rap critic. Make sure you're following us on the social so you never miss what we're up to. And speaking of what we're up to, uh, RC has got the stream schedule and what you got going down over on Twitch. That's right. That's right. Uh, Twitch.tv slash rap critical. I'd be uh, listening through to uh, the Billboard Top 100. Um, I'm on 2013 right now and going into 2014. And uh, I also take uh, requests uh, for streams. So if you want to request uh, best of of an artist, uh, so I like go through like an artist, uh, you know, discography of like a rapper and, you know, like give you like my favorite joints from, him, you know, um, the stuff that I feel like will be like, no, if you hear this, you're going to want to listen to this guy. You know what I mean? You can just request an album for us to just like stream and listen to. So I've got that available on my Kofi at Kofi.com slash rap critic. So you can either do, you know, the one time support for Kofi.com slash rap critic over there, or you can do ongoing support at Patreon.com slash rap critic, where uh, I've got my uh, four songs that are up there that you can listen to that I have been listening back to myself and being kind of like, you know, having to think of like, oh man, this is dope. Yeah, no, no, I think it's dope. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, usually you're like, man, this is good. This is good. Nah, this is good. This is good. But this is good. Nah, this is good. Like, you know, the, the artist back and forth, you got everything. But, but, you know, hey, you, you, you the uh, listener, you, you be the judge. Uh, you be the judge. Slash rap critic. And uh, I definitely would appreciate the feedback because I'm, you know, um, I'm giving it exclusively to the patrons uh, supporting me first. And they're sort of like, hey, thanks for supporting me. You guys get to hear all this before everyone else does. And you know, I'd love yeah. to hear like the feedback to be like, because when I do officially release it, I would like to, to be the dopest that I can make it. So, you know, um, I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the support. Uh, we, uh, you know, join for the Rap Critic Discord. where you can chat with me and fellow fans, all that fun, sexy stuff. Uh, I think that's everything that I could think about for now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I got the fan house popping off over there. It's fanhouse.app slash riffcoms. Uh, that's where you can get exclusive behind-the-scenes videos from the Riff Coms and Riff Break filming sessions, as well as the uh, Kids Bop Live reaction videos posted on a nearly daily basis. That is a uh, 
a $3 a month subscription for the fan house. And if you want to give extra, uh, you can still post tips on the individual posts if you want to help out a little bit more. Uh, but I also got my own Patreon and, and my own Kofi. Those links are uh, in the description. So there are no shortage of ways to subscribe. But until next time for Going Off, I am Muse. And I am Rap Critic. And something horrible wants to destroy our humble nowhere shack. Who will protect our home? Someone protect our home. Who will protect our home? Courage the cowardly dog. Courage the cowardly dog. <laughs> <laughs> I had to fucking do it on him. <laughs> Hell yeah.